You're tuned into the Writing Community Chat Show, the live streaming YouTube podcast that brings you the stories of authors, screenwriters, and more. Indie or established, this show's for the community, and we invite you to be a part of it. Head to the Writing Community Chat Show.com for more info. The WCCS, together as one, we get it done. Hello and welcome to the Right Community Chat Show. Ah, oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I did have the wrong screen up there. I do apologize, Chris Uli. Um, I have a guest up there, but we will bring our guests on very soon. Uh, it's, it's great to be here, honestly. It's been a week. Um, it definitely has. I'm glad to be here and enjoying the Friday night. Looking forward to the weekend. How are you doing, Mr. Hooley? Yeah, it was good up until the moment you uh, relegated me from the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, that you know, brought we... flashbacks to Harrogate when you and Carver were chilling out and I was away. <laughs> well, so, Will is yeah. uh, now, now also a podcaster, so it could happen, Chris. I'm not saying you're getting relegated, but it could happen. It could. Uh, and he's a very good podcaster, um, if you've not heard. His show, I'm sure we'll get into it, but Let's Get Lit is definitely my second favourite writing show um, after the WCCS, obviously. Um, but yeah, definitely check that out. Um, but yeah, I'm good, Chris. How are you? Well, like I said, I've had a bit of a... a it happens. It happens. A crappy week. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. I'm being tired. Mm. I have got. I have been training. That's good. Um, but it's just been one of those worky weeks where you're like, yeah, it my mind's on the show i'd like i, I want to be doing this but work life um so it's been one of those but i did which is amazing managed to get last minute tickets or my wife did um to go and see nothing but thieves in swansea on wednesday night i think it was wednesday that's how much of a week it's been maybe no tuesday night um and they were incredible so yeah i got to go to a good gig and now i'm here on the show so yeah it's been a bit of a long week, but this is what this show is all about, and it always has been, is being part of this community. So hello to you, Anna. Hello to you, Anna, um, and everyone else that's tuning in. Um, so yeah, the community and relaxing is what this show is all about, and uh, I'm, I'm glad we're here. That's all I'm going to say. What about yourself? Yeah, the brilliant week. Um, I know we don't talk about football a lot, but City won this week and all the other teams lost or dropped points. So I was happy with that. Um, and yeah, got some pretty chunky writing done. Um, got a, what, about four or five thousand words in this week. So yeah, I was pretty happy with that. Nice. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the writer's strike in Hollywood and all those places um, in terms of the movie world is starting to be unraveled and people are starting to come back to that. So it's interesting to see how that, that happens. The actors are still going through negotiations and all that stuff. So hopefully we'll get some um, some resolutions. Is that the right word? Some things resolved um, in that world and we can get back to having films and series out that we love. Um, a series mm. I have been watching this week is The Burning Girls, Chris, which you, if you remember, oh, yeah. Stephen Tudor, who came on our show, was the author oh. of The Burning Girls. Um, and that series is more horror than I expected, even though we had her on the show uh, and she talked about it. Uh, it's been very interesting so far. Yeah, there's a lot of um, authors that we've had on the show that are getting their moment in the in the limelight in terms of shows being made or films being made. And, you know, it's always good to see because we have the initial conversation and then, you know, a year or two down the line, a TV show appears or a Netflix show appears mm -hmm. and, you know, that's great. I, you know, long may it continue. And I'm hoping that tonight's guest that we've got on, um, I'm hoping there's something um, from him in the pipeline in the future um, because his books are fantastic and they'd be brilliant on screen. Um, and it's a pleasure. I think he's been on three times already. Um, so we definitely wow. need to get some sort of hat trick ball or something uh, sent to Mr. Carver. He, he certainly has. He's, he's been on the panel show once with a seriously dodgy internet connection. Um, he's been as a guest a couple of times, and I've met him a couple of times at Harrogate and had a couple of beers. And um, one of my favorite tweets of all time has come from Mr. Carver, who said at like four in the morning that he loves me. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I'm very much looking forward to this chat. Um, 
But yeah, honestly, it's it is great to see the the caliber of guests we have on this show, whether they're indie authors or otherwise, um, because they always seem to be going in the right direction, uh, which is great for the community to see people progressing in the right way as an author, because we know it's not easy. It's really not. And mm. to see people continue to bring out great books, uh, Psychopaths and Ominous, I read of Will's book uh, recently, fantastic. And now um, Upstairs at the Beresford, which you can see up above Chris Hooley's head, um, mm. is a fantastic sounding book as well, with elements of horror in, which is fantastic for me, who's a horror fan. Um, but yeah, also... Um, what, sorry, I was going to say what I like is the fact that this time last year, Carver was on the show again um so this you know, it's an anniversary yeah <laughs> um and i think we talked about the beresford then and you know i asked him you know is there going to be any more from the beresford and you know it's it's such a a nice thing to see that we had it was an initial conversation he was like oh, maybe and now obviously it's released and it's out there in the wild for people to go and get so you know it it's a really nice thing to see it makes me realize how unproductive i am um, <laughs> <because> <laughs> the conversation then he wrote the whole book and now it's out there in the wild um yeah. but yeah great to have him back tonight it's, it's mad isn't it and it, it when we say a year on we're not just talking about a year on we're talking about a year to the day a year ago on oh. this friday mr calvo was on the show it, it's very strange it worked out that way but it did and you're, you're right it's like we had um the beresford and now upstairs at the beresford it's like part one part two but of course, what that means is we've already had Will's introduction, the road to writing for that sort of stuff. So if you are interested in seeing his road to writing, um, I will try to get the link that comes across the top of the screen to pop up now when I'm pointing at it. It's unlikely to happen in the right place. But if that pops up and you want to hear his road to writing first, click on that link and then come back to this video and see part two, I guess, um, of this. But what's also interesting is since the start, um, uh, um, or the Beresford sort of journey. Will Carver has also started a writing podcast as well, which is incredible. We love to see the network expand in that sense. And uh, the more people out there delivering the kind of knowledge and um, sharing their experience and, and talking about the writing world makes it easier for the people like we are and we were at the start of this uh, podcast. So it's really good to see that happening. And he ho he co-hosts that with uh, S.J. Watson, who we on the show as well. Um, so, yeah, very good stuff, which we're going to chat about. Um, I'd like to know everyone in the chat. Chris mentioned that he's got some writing done this week. It is the season of Nano Rimo. Um, if you're taking part in that, please let us know. Um, if you're not, or even if you are, um, let us know how your writing week has been, how many words you got down. Is your writing progressing in the right, right way? Um, and if you need help, let us know about what kind of help you need. And maybe our guest tonight can shed some light on the, the issues you're facing. So as I mentioned, not the usual format tonight, but that means you can send questions in whenever you feel like it, uh, comments as well. And, and that's kind of it. Oh. Yeah. So without further ado, let's let's get him on. I'm going to big him up a little bit more before he comes on. Um, yeah. But I honestly believe he is the best writer um, not just in the UK, but in total across the whole board at the minute. Um, his books are fantastic. You will never read anything like a Carver book. Um, you know, someone who I think I read quite widely. Um, and his books are always unique. They're always different. They're always pushing the boundaries. And he's a, he's a brilliant author to, to learn from. Um, so, yeah, let's get chatting to him tonight. Cool. I'll, I'll do my introduction, Chris, as I always prepare them. All oh, right, um, okay. <laughs> but, but now, you, but now you've done that, I think I might not have to. Yeah. Um, let's do it anyway. Uh, okay. So tonight's guest, as you may have noticed, Mr. Will Carver, um, who has been fantastic. Uh, he's a literary force who's been turning the heads of lit in the literary world uh, from being described as a master of literary crime novels to defying genres altogether. Will's work sits on the edge of crime fiction, challenging storytelling norms, with long listings and short listings for prestigious awards like the Amazon Readers Independent Voice Award and the Thixton's Old Peculiar Crime Novel of the Year Award, Will Carver's books have captivated readers and critics alike. His latest release, Upstairs at the Beresford, promises a darkly humorous journey into the realms of crime and horror, with the added excitement of the Beresford currently in TV development, Mr. Hooley. Uh, but that's not all. 
Uh, Will has ventured into the world of podcasting with the Let's Get Lit podcast, where he, alongside fellow writer SJ Watson, dives into the world of books and writing each week. And of course, they do that whilst celebrating with a beer, as we love to do. So without further ado, please welcome to the show, Mr. Will Carver. Hello, Will. Oh, hello. All right. How are you doing? I was having one last week. Yeah. Perfect introduction there. Uh, yeah. Um, it's so good to have you back on the show, Will. We are we are long, long time fans of yourself um, through the medium of book and your personality. Um, it's great to have you back. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's nice. I've, I've been on a few times now, like you said. I was, uh, I'm still, yeah, Chris, very, very, Chris Hooley. I mean, he's very, very nice <laughs> things he said about me there. I'm a bit embarrassed now, but um, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> It's good to be. Uh, here. Don't be. He, he, he's fanboying a little bit. Um, yeah. No, don't don't be don't be embarrassed. Yeah, it's it's great to have you on. And I'm sure, like I said, if, if people are interested, then go back and look at your you wrote to writing. So what we're going to do, in all honesty, is wing this show on a Friday night, which is nothing unusual on the WCCS. We're going to have a couple of beers. We're going to chat about yourself and about your writing, and we want questions in from you guys. Um, but before we get into that, will whereabouts in the world are you coming from tonight? I'm in Reading. I'm in my son's bedroom <laughs> at the moment, <laughs> but just because it's kind of in like a quieter corner of the house. So I just, uh, yeah, you can see like I've got, oh, other side. There's like a Spurs top picture there with Harry Kane. I mean, I'm yeah. that, like I wouldn't have that in my bedroom as much as I support them <laughs> and love them. Um, mm. and although we did lose this week. Yeah. But I um, mean, how, how did he feel that, that you kicked him out of his, his room for you to do a show? He's not. He's not here tonight, so that's okay. So yeah, yeah. I've, I've been coming in here quite a bit actually. He's got. I bought him a nice chair for his desk, and it's yeah, it works. So I've been kind of writing up here as well and doing. I've recorded a few podcasts this. I've been on a couple of podcasts this week. Yeah, he obviously yeah. got a book out. So if yeah. you, if you don't mind, how old is his is his son? He is. Uh, he'll be twelve in December. Has he dabbled in the world of writing? Considering his dad is Will Carver, he. He was really proud of something he did in school this week. He's uh, um, he was writing a story, and but he wrote about someone like getting killed. <laughs> I was like, oh gosh, it's dark already. So yeah, yeah, he does. I don't think that's what what he he wants to do, but he does love it. He does love it. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, it, it's good. I mean, um, I've got twin boys uh, who will amazingly would be twenty in January. Um, Wow. I think one of them is half read one of my books and yeah. no interest in writing at all. So it goes to show that the more effort you put in as an author, the more likely yeah. your offspring are to follow in their footsteps. <laughs> well, <maybe>. <laughs> yeah. I'm, um, I'm actually, I'm, he's, he's, he plays, um, he's been playing football since he was little and he's in secondary school now. And he, he tried out for the rugby team this week and I used to be a rugby player. So, and he got Ooh. in, he texts me uh, to say he got in. So I was, I was really chuffed. So, yeah, you never know. You might follow in my footsteps. On yeah. that. Mm. You were quite a pretty good rugby player as well, weren't you, Will? From what I remember from different conversations. Yeah, yeah. I will, yeah. Well, yeah, I played for Bath back when Bath were, you know, the top team. They they didn't lose. They won mm. everything. Um, yeah, and I just kind of threw it all away to be a, like a poor writer. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> not poor quality. You know, yeah, yeah. the quality is there. Yeah, financially um, poor. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it, it is great. I mean, and sport is wonderful, especially when you're young. I think it's it's a really good thing in terms of development of of kind of mental awareness, but also teamwork and sort of resilience as well. Um, and that can obviously lead into life experience, and then developing your writing knowledge could, could benefit from that as well. Um, but sport, yeah, I, I, yeah. I think with with the rugby, it's nice to to learn how to take a hit as well, you know, yeah. just to, to get pounded a couple of times and get hurt. I think that's, that's character building stuff, you know? Yeah. Well, Chris was watching, talking before the show about American football and he watched it this week and a couple of people got pounded and injured. Yeah. Um, so it is, yeah. it is definitely a, a reason that I was tempted after the world cup to go back to rugby um, recently, yeah. bear in mind on 14 January, um, mm. I decided against it for <laughs> obvious reasons. <laughs> Yeah, I think I mean, you you get to an age where like every time you get up, you're like, oh, like, yeah, I shouldn't be playing. I shouldn't be joining a rugby team now. You just got caught up yeah. in it. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, di I did that the other day. Um, and I, I basically leant down to pick my bag up in work and I made a noise and everyone in the office looked at me and I went, oh, he's getting old. I thought, yeah, oh my yeah. God, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It does, yeah. yeah. No, it so, definitely does. Go on, Chris. I was going to say, up, upstairs at the Beresford, uh, obviously mm -hmm. we touched on it a little bit um, at the start that we had a conversation this time last year about it being a possibility about you going back to the Beresford. Yeah. Um, so what made you go back? And um, because this is a sequel, can we, can we call it a sequel? Well, it's, it's oh, prequel, another prequel. part of the story, but it is before. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, a prequel. <coughs> so what, what made you think, right, I've, that idea is worth going into? Honestly, it's a bit of a mercenary thing, but uh, because the the first book was optioned for TV and um, the contract basically said if there was a sequel, they'd kind of take that on <laughs> as well. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll do another one. Um, so... Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I had the idea and I wanted to go back anyway. I think it mm. would work really. I, I quite like a, a trilogy, you know, so I, I mm. think there will probably be one more. Um, mm. Yeah. And I had the idea and then but that kind of forced me to, to do it. Plus, I'd written two weird books in a row, like The Dave's Next Door and then Suicide Thursday were like, mm. they were kind of weird. They were weird. I, I enjoyed them. I enjoyed writing them and stuff. But um I, I, you know, sometimes I push it a bit too far, and maybe I did with those. Mm. So I needed to write something that was fun. I find the Beresford books really fun to write because mm. they're kind of they're just a bit out there with that horror thing, you know, that horror mm. element. They're not not as realistic, and you can, you can play with it a bit more. So yeah, I just wanted to have a bit of fun, really. Mm. I'll touch on the Dave's next door in a minute because I've got a question about that um, that I'd like to ask, um, but. With the Beresford books, would you class them as sort of like locked room type novels because they obviously take place in one setting and you're moving around in the different apartments and stuff? And yeah. um, how do you navigate that as a writer to make? Because the Beresford is almost a character in itself. Yeah. So, I think so. so how how do you how do you do that? Like you know, for a lot of people that are watching, um, you know, for tips and stuff like that, how do you make? A book that you're not moving around loads in different locations how do you make that really interesting for the reader i think you just have to fill it with with loads of good characters um it's it's the only it, it's the only way yeah it's, it's really tough if you if you kind of confine yourself to this space i mean yeah so so i think and it's quite good because it's a hotel you can have room, loads of rooms loads of different characters um so, so that's what that's what I did. I really love. There's there's a kid in it, Odie. He's just like every all the comments I've had so far, like in the last two three days since it's been out. Everyone loves this this little kid that's in it, and uh, yeah, I think I think that's how you have to do it because, like you say, you're confined to to that. Mm. But I think but um, yeah, yeah, you make that you make the building a character, don't you? You know, yeah. like remember Sex and the City. Everyone was like, "Oh, New York is a character." I, you, you have to do that. So, <laughs> and no, I think you're exactly right. When you've got a hotel setting, which has been brilliantly used in you know great horrors and and other series, that each room could be the same, but it's who lives inside that room that can yeah. really bring it to life. Um, so, so in terms of making a great character, what what's your advice for someone who's looking at character development? Oh, that's a good question. Sorry, I'm just moving. Um, I don't, I, gosh, you know, I just, I don't, I don't know how to answer that. So someone to develop <laughs> a good character. I think I tend to start with, um, I, te I, the way I do it is I, I will pick something that I know about a character that I, that I might know, and I, I will take it to the nth degree. You know, if someone, I don't know, tells awful jokes, you know, you don't just have someone who tells all. You take it to to the very end. You, I don't know. You make them a prankster. <laughs> you, 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 um, you know, you make them a killer who, you know, who bases their deaths on jokes or whatever. I, I just think that's one way to do it. The other way is to is to is to drill into the tiny tiny details because that's what make that's what makes people real. So I remember writing a character once and she goes into a drawer she's she's having a 
a bottle of wine. And when she goes in to get the wine, the bottle opener out, the, the cork from her last bottle is still on there. And it's and it's kind of it's something that everyone does. We we all open the thing and we don't take the cork mm. off and throw it away. We just leave it there and put it back mm. in the drawer. And and I think picking up on those tiny things are what make characters in a book real people. Um, so yes, that's you know that's two ways of doing it. Either take yeah. it to the nth degree or drill down into that kind of mm. minute detail. Mm. So, so when you're planning for that sort of thing, do you keep like a log of, of each of those characters? Because obviously it might be quite complicated. It's got a vast amount of characters. Yeah. Do you need to kind of keep a log of what their kind of tendencies are or what their personalities are like? Or, or have you got that locked in your mind when you're writing it? Yeah, I think, I know you, you people do this and they'll have like a character and they'll write, you know, a list of their traits and things. And, and I think, I, I don't do that. I'll have something and I'll think this character is a sweet young boy who reads a book at, um, outside his room while his mum is in there getting paid to, <laughs> to have <sex. laughs> um, and, and that's what I've got. And I think... <laughs> Uh, and then you write the scene and then and then you and then you kind of become that character and think how would I feel if I was that character sitting outside and my mum was doing that and um I think that that's how that's how I do it. I tend to learn as I go take take a mm. little thing about what the character is and then as you write you learn more you learn more so yeah that's how I do it. I, st I store a lot in my head and I shouldn't because mm. you know fall off a curb mm. and then I've lost a book. <laughs> but, um, yeah. 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 So, or, or, or the notes app on my phone. Uh, oh my God. There's like hundreds and hundreds. It's always I'm always at traffic lights as well. And it's like, oh my God, I need to get this down. Um yeah. So no, but I don't I don't map I don't map any characters out like that. I prefer to kind of get mm. to know them. How how many yeah. based on your notes? Do you have one note or do you have multiple notes on your phone? multiple yeah i could scroll okay. back kind of seven years and find an idea i had yeah. for book yeah when i was mm. chatting to ellery lloyd in harrogate for pan mcmillan um they were speaking about how i can't remember the the, the guy's name at the, at the moment um how he has one massive note on his phone with all of his information and story information like yeah. one humongous note yeah. and i was just thinking imagine if that got deleted yeah it's gone i know yeah mm. <laughs> yeah so well going going back in time with where the first beresford novel was set yeah how did you throw yourself into that like because did you do a lot of research and was it liberating not having to like mention maybe mobile phones or you know covid and all this type of stuff um oh because i went back it's the, the great thing about the, the Beresford books is that because I don't say where it's set, I don't say it's in New York or Tokyo or London or whatever, I can just make it up. So yeah. so with a lot with with other things, I, I you know, I'll go to London or I'll, you know, I'll I'll research something on Google Maps and get the satellite view or whatever. Um, or is this I can just make it up. I can just yeah. I can set it set it anywhere anywhere I want. I just say there's a city out there, there's smog, you know, some people might see it as London, some people might see it as, as New York and, and, and it works either way. Um, but it's, yeah, it's good to be back there. I think, so when I wrote the original one, it was just like these six apartments uh, in, the, in like downstairs. And then my editor said, you should make the building bigger. And I was like, oh really? That's not really what I wanted, but I just, so I kind of wrote this other half of the building it was this mm. tall structure and I never really did anything with it. I just used that as a, as a kind of description of what the building would look like. And mm. I'm so glad that I went with it because it gave me this, I, this idea. I could... mm. And if you, you're quite a, anyone who's ever read any of your books, you know, you're quite big on Easter eggs and things like that, like little snippets. Yeah. Did you reference the first Beresford novel at all throughout the process of doing this? Yes, big time. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, so, <laughs> the 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 woman who looks after the original the original the Beresford in the original book, Mrs. May. Um, this this tells a story of what happened before it was when it was a hotel, um, but it's mm. also her origin story of how she became the woman who took over what the Beresford mm. is in the first book. 
Um, so it's really great. To, she's one of my favourite characters I've written. So it's nice to kind of go yeah. back and uh, and do her. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. One of the one of the things I liked what you mentioned just there is literally making stuff up because as an author, creative expression is what we kind of love about it, and we can, we can make stuff up as it is. Is there anything that you've randomly made up that you can maybe you were surprised at or that kind of you think that was a great thing to have made up that wasn't kind of naturally going to be in the process? Always. I mean, it always happens. So that you know usually it's 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 a it's a character that's that's sprung up so in in this you're talking about that easter egg thing um there was a character in the days next door she she was in it basically in the days next door this old man takes an overdose and his two young neighbors come in and, and find him there and kind of save him and he he thinks they're angels like he convinces himself he's all you know he's taken loads of pills and he he thinks they're angels and they kind of take care of him but they're not really they're taking advantage of him and the woman that's in that that gets blown up at the end of that book she uh I just I really liked her and I wanted I wanted a character to come in I into the building um and I didn't know what it was it was just to kind of break up two scenes and I thought I'll just bring her in and so so she's in it and she's got a much bigger role in this book um and yeah, I, I again, I didn't know what she was going to be. I just I, I needed someone to come to the front desk and check in. And I just I don't know, maybe I'd been watching clips of Psycho or something. But this woman comes in and she's <laughs> stolen money from yeah. her employer. And she's which is like the start of the Psycho film. And she she stays on the seventh floor. All of this is set on the seventh floor the, um, upstairs at the Beresford. There, there are many floors that we could talk about, but um, that's the one I focus on. Um, yeah, and and that was kind of a surprise to me because I, I wasn't going to have her in it, and and I didn't know what that character was going to be. It just it just came out. Mm. Nice. Mm. Why why number well, seven? Sorry, Chris. I know. Mm. I, I need no, to it's all right. You. No, it's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was really just kind of logistics of the building. The first two floors are uh, where the apartments will be in the in the in the new Beresford. The third floor was like a conference hall where half of this takes place there's a big conference where the guy who owns the building kind of picks off 12 people that he wants to kind of exploit and then there's kind of rental floors for three floors and then the top ones are the, like the that's where the nasty stuff happens yeah yeah and, and so i just picked one of them yeah yeah my, my question was i can't think of a better way to phrase it but other than in two parts but how do you get into a woman and i'm gonna preface that <laughs> with you write really good characters because you write mave obviously and mrs may mm. that are obviously both women but it, they're so convincing and a lot of readers that read and review your books they always talk about you know mave in psychopaths anonymous as being such a unique character and yeah. a character that they resonate with and it's the same with mrs may I remember you when you released the Beresford, a lot of people were talking about her as being, you know, an amazing character. So what would your advice be to male writers to write from a female perspective or to create female characters? Um, and yeah, just that's it basically. I'm asking I a think, very male question. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think of them as women. I think that's, that's the trick. I don't, I don't do that. I just think of them as characters and I give them those, those traits, those personality traits, basically. Um, I, I mean, Maeve could have been John. You know, it could have been, you, you, you could have made that a male serial killer, but it, it wouldn't have worked as well. Um, so I think I, I never, it's really hard because you, again, you, you don't just want to say, oh, Maeve had a period or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I've written a woman. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, no. So I just again, I just think about what that person is like, uh, um, mm. how they would how they would act. And it just so happened that she was a woman. I wanted to make her a woman anyway. I, you know, it's mm. good to have a a strong, you know, woman taking it out on the man, you know, for once, because we don't we don't see that a lot, especially in crime fiction. It's always girls mm. getting getting killed. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I just I don't. I don't even think of it. I don't think 
I need to make if this is a woman, so I need to be, I need to do certain things to make her womanly. I just she is a woman. Describe her as a woman, and then give her the personality that you would give the character. Yeah, I might have to rename this episode "How to Get with a Woman," quoted by Chris Hooley. Yeah, um, <laughs> how to get in, how to get into a woman. Yeah, how to get into a woman. Yeah. What I'm interested in is that I mentioned in the introduction and this is information off your website that the episodes of the Beresford is crime mixed with horror and that is something that appeals to me massively I, I'm a big horror fan so crime fiction I have read but I am predominantly horror so merging the two genres and bringing me into that why did you decide to put horror elements into your story and how did you mix crime with horror I'll tell you now. So I, I never really, I never think of myself as like a crime writer because my books are so far away from what is kind of crime writing. Um, I, I just think of myself as a writer, but I, there always happens to be crimes with within whatever I do. So if you go back to like Good Samaritans, for me that is just like a love story, right? That's that's it's a crime novel because people get killed, mm. but but really it's it's about a relationship. It, between a dysfunctional couple, this woman who will do anything for her her husband, even though he does these horrendous things. So I think with the Beresford and upstairs at the Beresford, it's for me, it was more about kind of the devil and God and what it is, how much a soul is worth and and, and what do you want out of life? And, um, you know, it just so happens that people die, so it gets lumped into crime. But, you know, I... I don't really think about the genre, but I, I like you. I love I love horror films. I love them, and uh, that obviously, if you love something, it's, you, it's easier to write. I think so. Um, so no, I never really think of the genre, and I never think of myself as crime either. I just it just so happens that I like killing people off. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I would like to write. I'd, I'd, I'd like to write a straight horror, like a a, a proper mm. horror. Um, oh. but I think maybe I'd, I'd do that for like the screen or something. I think, yeah, oh. yeah. Um, the question I was going to ask you then was going back to the days, uh, next door, the way you ended that book, and I'm not going to spoil it for anyone who hasn't read it. I recommend obviously you go and read it. Um, but the way you ended it kind of implied that you could go back. Um, is that something that you might do in the future? Um, obviously having gone back to the Beresford, could you go back to the days next door? Um, do you know, <laughs> I think when I wrote that first Beresford, I always knew there was more to it. And I think with the days, I feel, I don't know, at the moment, I don't feel there is, I feel like it's done. But mm. I don't know, you know, I, I could look down my phone and, and there might be an idea in there that I've forgotten about, who knows. <laughs> um, but no, I think I think that one's done. I, uh, But we'll see. But uh, that just came out in Japan. Mm. And uh, I think that they, they like it. I mean, they're very thoughtful readers and it's it is quite a a thoughtful book a, a bit cerebral maybe mm. but um so yeah i don't know that i loved writing that as an exercise especially like all the 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 guy who doesn't know if he's a, a terrorist or if he's god or or the narrator of mm. the novel um i know so, see i told you it was weird um <laughs> uh, you know just writing that all his all his chapters of question after question after question but kind of make a story and that was really as a writing exercise that was kind of fun for me to do and difficult and and, and I, I quite like the challenge of it but I feel like that's done that's done now I don't know if I'd do that again mm. what's what's it like having your work released somewhere like a foreign country it do you do you feel like you're waiting for a response from the readers like it could be a different kind of response is that does that make sense a different kind of response well i think i think different nations see books yeah very differently don't they so i think like i said like the, japan is is a very thoughtful nation when it comes to to novels so uh, they they are the only other country that took took that book and i think it's the right place for it um but i do, um i don't know I, I i do really well in mexico so i sell <laughs> i sell i sell more books in mexico than i do in the uk it's mad, oh, wow. and, and but but it's like, but why? Why? Yeah, I have, it, I have people not... message me in Spanish all the time. Like, mm. That's not like a marketing that... technique, or that's just happened. 
Yes, just happened. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> the the publisher there just just released it in Mexico and mm. Spain, and it you know Good Samaritans. They love it. Do you know what I think it is? And this is obviously just a, a fan theory now as to why they take off in other countries. I think it's because your books explore like the human condition and what it is to be human at like a philosophical level because you you know you've obviously talked quite a bit about religion and things like that and i think you explore that within your characters and um, so my question on the back of that is mm. how do you do that is it just because you've got a natural interest in people or is it something that you're consciously trying to craft when you when you write yeah i think it's <sighs> some people pick up a book and they want to be transported somewhere and forget what's going on in the world and it, you, we see like this resurgence of um cozy crime right because the world is shit and everything's going down the toilet and and people just want to want something nice they want like a little miss marple character wandering around solving a crime at the village fate because it's it, it's nice um and i don't i don't I don't read books like that because I, d I don't want, I, I mean, I'll watch films and things like that and escape, but, but with, with books, I like something that's a bit challenging and, and, and something that makes me think. And I, I, that's the things I write. Um, yeah. I'm generally kind of pissed off with stuff as well. Like I'm just like, I'm annoyed and, uh, and mm. it's a good fuel for, for getting words out. If you're, if you're annoyed with something, obviously it's, it's wonderful if you're feeling great about something too, but, Mm. Anger is 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 a great creative lubricant. <laughs> <laughs> mm. you, you've mentioned um, writing for screen a couple of times, and it's something I dabbled in uh, last year and should be dabbling in, but sidetracked at the moment. Is that something you think about going into? And as we're out the back of uh, horror spooky season, you mentioned horror films a few times. What's your kind of go to horror film? Oh, well, I've been watching a few recently because uh, obviously it was Halloween and <clears throat> there was lots on like all the movie channels and things. So uh, what my favorite, my two favorites are te uh, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Nice. And, and I love the Blair Witch Project as well, because I watched that on my own. Um, at like I was, It was about three o'clock in the morning. I couldn't sleep. I didn't see it at the cinema. Even I worked at the cinema at the time and uh, I couldn't sleep and I put it on and I just I remember watch it the the daytime footage i was like yeah yeah as soon as it turned to night i went cold like my chest tightened up and i i can't forget that feeling and uh so yeah for me that is such a terrifying film and, and nothing really you don't see anything and nothing really happens yeah. um so i i get i get scared by like those redneck films you know where it's just yeah. like they get lost out back and there's this family <laughs> that are all inbred and, and they try you know they capture someone that scares me more than kind of poltergeist or or whatever yeah. so um, hills, hills of ice was a good one like that yeah 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 it's Ooh. great mm. I, I this mean, question sounds sorry i, I was just going to say yeah. off the back of that this question sounds quite loaded but you've kind of dipped your toe into the water of little groups almost cult-like are you ever going to tackle head on the sort of cult psychopath type you know charming man type figure in a novel yes i love it i love all that <laughs> cult stuff i just started watching one on netflix the other day uh oh god what's it called something like i don't know but this this guy and his girlfriend met and they fell in love straight away and then they set up this kind of business of helping people find their soulmate essentially and it ended up as this cult, like, and I, I'm only one episode in it. And I was like, this is so brilliant, like how they do it. And it's the same every time, the same way they set up these cults. Um, mm. I would I would love to. Yeah, because obviously the one I wrote, the cult one, it was it was a bit different. He, you know, mm. he was hidden. He wasn't it, it was an invisible cult. So, yeah, I would mm. I would love to do it. Definitely. And I, I definitely, definitely will. I, yeah. I've just started Good. this week watching <laughs> the Dharma series and. Uh, yeah, with good. Evan Peter Evans, I think Evan, um, if Evan something isn't it? Yeah, Evans, yeah, he's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely incredible. And and the scariest part of that is that it's something that happened. But just yeah. people love that sort of drama, and and they love to look at the the true crime and 
the elements around that as well. So True Crime has been a wonderful asset to you. And obviously we spoke about your awards you've won previously. And you've written True Crime, Elements of Horror. Those are great genres. But are there any genres that you now really kind of want to go into that you haven't tested before? Um well 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 I've I've kind of taken from true crime and and and, and made it uh, fictional but I so I'm working on something at the moment um that is that is a true crime that happened I was contacted by someone online um I was talking about writing a true crime thing and uh yeah it's just this place it's very small like you know off the map it's like it's not even on the map there's like 111 people that live in this town and something happened in the 80s um, mm. and the, uh, someone was falsely a, a accused of something and then they get out and then and then something happens after they get out. Um, and it's very difficult to find stories that, that, that people don't know. And I didn't know this and I don't think a lot of people do. So I'm tr I, I wrote it as a book. Um, and it does work and it is interesting, but. I think it worked better as like a, a podcast series. Yeah. So, you know, like serial. So, so, so that's, that's what I'm working on at the moment. So it's not kind of screenwriting, but I, mm. I quite like this, this thing, you know, I've got interviews and things mm. and I just need to kind of put it together and, but, but it, it obviously script it with, with, yeah. with me as part mm. of it. So yeah. So is, that, is that like more like an audio drama? Yeah, essentially. Yes. Mm. But, um, yeah, but true, and it's, it's nice yeah. to not make make stuff up as well. Uh, it's mm. a bit more research than than you normally would. So, yeah, but I don't mm. think there is a, a genre that's that's off limits. Like I say, I, I don't always think about that. I um, mm. I'll write the story that I want to write, and then mm. sometimes I just have to shoehorn in a bit of crime so that they know what <laughs> shelf to put it on. You know. Yeah. So, well, you've given us a segue there um, to go into podcasting because obviously you mentioned the audio drama and it worked as a podcast. Um, how have you found life as a podcaster and how did the, the launch go? Because you did a, a launch for Upstairs at the Beresford through Let's Get It. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, I um, I was just I was in a pub, I think, before the Harrogate Festival launch party with SJ Watson. We'd had a couple of beers and he was like, we should do a podcast. And I was like, should we? <laughs> should we really? I've got I've got enough to do. Um and then we kind of sat down and 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 hashed it out a bit and figured we would we it, we'd had quite a nice angle because he sold eight gajillion books <laughs> um and i haven't but i have quite i like critically i i do very well and um we thought we could talk about every writing um you know topic that we can think of but we can come at it from his side of huge commercial success and then my side of more critical success and uh we're like yeah okay let's hire a podcast studio and and um <laughs> take a bottle of wine in and see what happens and and yes yeah, so we've done seven seven or eight episodes now and last night we launched uh my new book and i was like oh let's record one live in front of everyone and it was great i haven't actually listened to it yet because we couldn't get both mics working so we're both on the same mic i think it's gonna be awful um and yeah and he I, I mean after about half an hour he's he'd had a few too many wines so I, we might not even be able to understand what he says in the second half but it was yeah it was i mean it's great fun but it's actually you know from doing this it's a lot of work that goes on after with editing it all together and and then pushing it and publicizing it and all of that so it's you know it's full on but i but i do enjoy the actual act of sitting down and yeah. like this and just talk, talking about the stuff um it's just making it and packaging it in a nice way that's takes the takes it, it the sounds like a wonderful episode well i'm not gonna lie <laughs> i need to listen to that <laughs> yeah 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 the, yeah we've spoken about kind of luck and failure and success yeah. and yeah and, and we have like a whatever we're drinking it goes we try and fit it with our our topic so the one we we yeah. spoke about being lucky in in getting published in the first place um we had kylie minogue's prosecco uh, because you know um and actually it was all right it was all right i thought it was gonna be awful yeah, yeah my amazing. favorite one i think was the pims one when you had the sort of knockoff pims oh it was <laughs> a fake pims, actually yeah. really good yeah 
It was good. Yeah, it really looked exactly like it, but it was called yeah. something else. Pim's type and drink. I, yeah. I was actually I was listening to that um, an episode where you mention your speech um, that you prepared for when you did win an award, and um, I was in a, a public space when I was listening to that. And I laughed so hard that everyone around me just looked at me <laughs> like, what are you doing? Oh, nice. But I couldn't tell them, obviously, what you'd said. Um, but it was the, the best speech I've ever heard. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone uh, yeah. now, but it, go and listen to Let's Get Lit and find out what Carver said in his speech. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's brilliant. Yes, it was, it was a bit rude, but it's, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, going back to your comment earlier, and Anya on the chat says, it sounds like a recipe. Uh, add a dash of crime. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, when I, when I did um, Suicide Thursday, that was just a book about a guy who was a writer and he couldn't finish anything. For me, that was the story. Um, I mean, there was no crime in it, really. And, I mean, his best friend kills himself so is that a crime I, d I don't know it's, it's a gray area but um yeah I started reading about this uh this couple they got together online and and but he was suicidal and he he kept he wanted to end it and she mm. was super supportive of him doing that he was like I can't I can't handle it in the world and she she would message him in the morning and like are you okay have you done it yet like but <laughs> yeah and in the end, she got she got prosecuted for mm. killing him, and it, I was just like, "What?" I mean, and, and and so it made me then think about the power of words. And this this whole book was about a writer, and I thought, "Yeah, wow." I mean, they, they've pinned that on her for kind of checking in on him and and helping him, you know, emotionally do this horrible thing that he did to himself. But mm. yeah, and she was trialed and for murder. That's it's crazy. It's, it's so yeah, so thing. I kind of. I shoehorned that in, basically. Yeah, yeah that was my little <laughs> little bit of crime. Yeah, there, there is a scary the, the fact in the world that that actually does happen, though, and people do, I, not in some just support, a supportive sense, but that does happen in the negative sense, and it's yeah. not it's not ideal at all. Um, no. So, what I'd like to see if you could do, I've not asked this to anyone on the show before. Do you think you could come up with a bit of homework for people who are watching this or listening back? Um, in terms of a writing prompt or a, a writing kind of process or writing work, what could they do to have a little write that can improve their craft? Oh, gosh. What, you want me to come up with that idea now? If if you could. <laughs> I mean, this could be a collective idea, Chris Hooley. I mean, Jesus. I mean, it's nice to get... You asked the question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it's enough. funny, isn't it? I, 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 I spoke to a writing group the other day, um in in red in Cavisham writers and they do this a lot they kind of get together and they have a prompt and then they they all write something and and i th i thought to myself, i never do anything like that because I, yeah. I i i don't really need it i've always got a million ideas and i just i sit down and I write. Already write so <laughs> yeah so 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 yeah it's really difficult for me to think of something but like they were saying things and i was like that is a good idea just to kind of spark someone off um, well, what about if, if we create a, a story idea that people can try and write a short story and send it back to us for next week? Mm. We yeah, get, and I'll, we, I'll yeah. read them. If between us, if we give a setting and a character... Well, okay, I was going to give a, a Carver-inspired one. Um, yes. So maybe they could write as though... Because in Hinton and Hollow Death Trip, Carver writes from the perspective of evil. So maybe if they could write from the perspective of an emotion, oh, yeah. um, and then we could see what see what people come up with. Yeah. So the hope or a being, concept or a concept, you know, just mm. yeah. We want a very short story about a concept or an emotion. Is yeah, there a scene the or narrator. a setting, or is that it? No, the narrator would be that concept or emotion. Um, okay. So you might write as love, for example, or you know. I don't know where you're going to go with it, but yeah, I mean, yeah, you could go super dark with love as well. I think yeah. that would be yeah. yeah. Title it "How to Get into a Woman." Please don't. And do it's that. actually, it's actually a, <laughs> that is actually a really good idea because I think it, it will help you find your voice writing as something else, you know. And, and it's, so, it's so that is the thing as a writer that you need is to find your voice, how you want to tell a story, and if you can do it as 
love or yeah. you know death or or whatever then then you're you're ahead of the game i think because because it's it's not mm. easy it's not easy it's not um was, oh, sorry I, get, I was going to say that was going to be one of my questions actually because you talk a lot about your inspirations for writing and you talked about fight club and things like that when you first started out writing yeah. when did you feel that you found your voice and that that was you and you you didn't feel like you would you know like you said before on the podcast i was I was, you know, I've read Fight Club, I loved it. I wanted to try and write something similar. When did you approach a book and it was like, this is a carver book? Um, <clears throat> I think I think it finally clicked with uh, Nothing Important Happened Today, just because it came out so quickly. I just, I was, I remember I was listening to the Eminem album, Kamikaze. It's a really angry album, basically him pissed off that loads of people said his last album was rubbish and then he wrote an, a, an album about that and, and and I was this was an angry topic that I was writing about as well and I would listen to that and then I would just bang 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 um, honestly it was like smoke coming off the keys it was and I, I hardly had to change anything at the end and and the sentences were short and they were sharp and it just exactly the right amount of information and i think yeah i don't know if i'll be able to do it again but but i i felt like that is me i've done it now and and i think the next few books became a lot easier because i you know i found my voice and i'm lucky with my with my publisher that i'm allowed to do this kind of stuff so um yeah i i yeah and, and that was the book that i found my voice <laughs> in and, and 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 i know my voice now and, and i can and i can do it I can do it. Yeah. When you talked about listening to Eminem or, or kind of musical influences, was that something you listened to whilst writing, or was it like a build up to that writing process? Normally, I can't I can't listen to anything with words in when I write, but but yeah. for some reason that album, I would kind of I was doing like a tour um, at the time, and I was on trains a lot, and I would just I had like my big cans on, and uh, I just kind of sit there like getting g'd up and then I, and then I, and then I could just put it on and I just I, I I knew it was going on I wasn't singing along and I was I, it's the only time that that has happened and I think that's why that book came out so well I think it was just oh it was just right nice yeah what I was gonna say um just before that question was <laughs> we've talked for 52 minutes and we've talked about some brilliant stuff and, and information mm. and topics and tips and and about upstairs at the Beresford but we haven't actually discussed or heard your blurb or pitch of the Beresford God, so yeah. could we please <laughs> let everybody know what the Beresford, Beresford upstairs the Ber oh my god upstairs at the Beresford is all about um and if they'd like and, and are interested in that book they can pick it up in the description of the show and support Will um but please could you let everyone know what that's all about so yes yeah, so, so that I'll, I'll tell you now the first Beresford book um was about an apartment block Someone dies in that building and then 60 seconds later, the doorbell rings and someone comes in to fill the, the room that has, someone has just died in. Um, and we don't know why. You find out why. It's cool. Um, and so this <laughs> is kind of a few years before that, um, when the Beresford was a hotel. It's, it's a very similar thing, but they, they are kind of learning how to get this uh, conveyor belt of people through the door, someone dies, someone else comes in. They haven't quite tweaked it enough that it's every 60 seconds, someone new comes in. Um, so we, we concentrate on the seventh floor. Um, there's there's a jazz singer uh, up there who has um, someone locked in her cupboard. There's um, the, the young boy I was talking about, his mum is kind of selling herself in the room while he sits on the radiator outside reading a book. There's a couple that um, they smoke weed out on the on the ledge and one day they just kind of they both fall off and we don't know if they've been pushed but it doesn't look like it and um, there's always something going on you know there's a guy already dead in there and his dog is kind of sitting next to him ready to eat his face but he doesn't um uh, but upstairs in the penthouse is um, mr Balliol, and he has screen a room of screens that he views the entire hotel he can see in every single corner you can see everyone there and he is essentially recruiting people to take their soul um 
yeah, so that's what it's about. Um, yeah, that is exactly what it's about. Chirpy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but I mean, but it is, but it is funny. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's 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 one of my funnier ones, I think. Yeah. How how do you possibly write a story like that that's got so many different things happening all at once without perhaps not confusing the reader but distracting them in the sense of the storyline? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think. I, my chapters are really, really short, and they only contain everything, all the information that you need. There's never anything extra in it. So you just get snapshots of the room, snapshot of room 730, snapshot of room 734, snapshot of the penthouse, snapshot of the of reception. And it's, just, and it's so quick. It is almost like watching a film or, or a TV show. Mm. I think it's because it's not chock full of info and describing the room. You You... You imagine it all yourself. Uh, so yeah. many people are like, oh, mm. that book was so bloody. And it's like, I never mentioned blood at all. And never. Mm. Uh, it's just you give the you give the reader just enough that they then bring the blood into it or or whatever it is. Mm. So that's very yeah. interesting, that comment. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. The got, question uh, I was going to ask them. Go on. Sorry, well, was um with the Beresford in the first one, obviously the magic is in the mystery. Were you worried about how you were going to navigate the mystery and explain the mystery in this book? Um, and how did you navigate that, knowing that you had people who are massively into the car reverse, massively into the first book, knowing it was going to be a TV series, because that must have added some extra pressure as well. Yeah. Um, you know, because it's like when they tried to explain Lost, for example, people yeah. sort of fell off. Uh, the yeah, bandwagon yeah. a little bit so what was that pressure like and how did you navigate it um i i don't i don't know about i don't know if i felt any pressure but i i was worried that obviously i've just mentioned kind of the whole selling your soul thing which which maybe you know if you read this first it might it not ruin the the first one if you haven't read that if you read read them in chronological order but it's the reveal isn't as revealing necessarily um so that 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 was a bit of a worry, but I think I never I never tie up my books with like a definitive answer for what the ending is. And again, it's just give the reader a little bit and then they can come up with it. So again, I've kind of left it open. And by the time you get to the end of this one, it can actually change everything that you think about that other book. So I mean it's difficult to do, but I've done it. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh my goodness, guys! We have a, literally two minutes left of this hour. It's unbelievable. Oh, I feel like we've only been here for ten minutes. I know it's unreal how quickly that's gone. If yeah. you do have questions, please send them in quickly. Um, oh, and if you do write this with this prompt, uh, send them over to me so I can read them, and I'll. I'll how would I'll they see. send them to you, or do you want them to send them? them to Get them to send them to you, or whatever. Okay. You know, they can email them to you and then you can send them to me and I'll uh yeah, we'll yeah I'll do throw that. some I'll... I'll throw some books at them or something. That'd be good. <laughs> yeah. No, that'd be good. Yeah. We've got one comment that made me laugh before from yeah. the what... And yeah. what we mean the, by that the... is we'll actually bring you across live and Will can actually throw books at you physically. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Ross Young in the comments made a comment um, in terms of what he was gonna write. Um and he's notorious for for jokes. Um, but <laughs> I can't put it up, Chris, because I don't have the, the oh, power. You I will have do it for you. I, um, you. You should have the power. But <laughs> yeah. it be. Very so, good. Uh, right. Very good. Yeah. yeah, that was a good. That was a good joke. It, it made me smile. Uh, it, but yeah, right. This procrastination. <laughs> but what? Read it out for the podcast listeners, Chris. So I'd write as procrastination, but I probably never get it finished. Um, and then, and then he followed on with go. this. Well, he only makes the book. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, but yeah, if if you are looking for a writing prompt this week, you know, writing through an emotion or what do we say, an emotion or a concept, uh, yes, or a concept, yeah, yeah, well, like um, war or something, you know, I don't know, yeah, do that, yeah. and um, yeah, we'll see what um, we'll kind of we'll send them over to Will, and he might give you some feedback or give you yeah. a bit of advice or whatever, and that'd be great, yeah, yeah. I'm, well, I'm do interested. you know what we? We didn't touch on NaNoWriMo. We didn't have time. No. But well, we, we can do quickly. I uh, so yeah. I just I um so I just started writing on Substack, which I love. 
I've got mm. something coming out about NaNoWriMo tomorrow and about exactly what I think of it. So, um, you know, <laughs> keep an eye out. It's, it should be a good read. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. We've got 10 seconds left, so I'm, go I'm just going to try and sum it up. Go and buy Will Carver's Upstairs at the Beresford. Go and buy the Beresford. Listen to Let's Get Lit and um, sign up to your Substack because it's going to be growing by the sounds of it. Hopefully. Yes. Um, fantastic. Well, as always, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show and chat to you. Thank um, you. It, I'm sure it's not going to be the last time. There's no way. Uh, but I hope all the best for your for your writing career, as we always say, but also for your podcast now, because it's interesting that you've taken that on with SJ Watson. And yeah. by the sounds of that last recording, very fun. And uh, we will definitely tune into that. And if you're interested in that, guys, I'm sure we can find the links and put them in the description of this video. Um, so go and support Will in that journey as well. And um, before we do wrap this up, what what can we expect next? I know I know upstairs at the Barrowford has just come out, but what could be next for uh, for your readers? I am writing a book now that will be that will come out uh, this time next year. Um, it's about uh, an epidemic, basically. I know I didn't want to get on that, but I am I'm writing something. <laughs> But it gets released before the COVID epidemic and it makes everyone nice. So essentially oh. they, con they contract this virus and it makes them nice. And um, the government don't like that because they don't want people being, being good and, and, and caring about things. Um, and, and, and they want to shut it down. So, yes, that's my next book. It's a bit of a speculative one. I, I, I don't know how many people will even die. But I, it's kind of... It's just going to be fun, yeah. And, really, and I really, get to not kill anyone, yeah. Yeah, really mm. strange coming from you, who who mentioned earlier you love to kill everybody. Now yeah. nobody's dying and everyone's nice. Yeah, I, I love this twist. I, I I'm looking yeah. forward to that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, and please please support Will. And um, we'll be back on another time. We'll be back on next week, and I'm sure. Will, when does your show come out? Uh, we we were trying to make it weekly, but it kind of comes out three, four weeks apart now because it's just. <laughs> uh, I mean, I do most of the work basically. So yeah, it's a lot yeah. of me, and then and then uh, SJ kind of he publishes it because he has lots okay. of followers. Yeah, cool. Look out for that, and um, and definitely tune in. But again, thank you so much. Um, thank you for tuning in, and and I hope you've had a good week. Please do try and do that writing prompt. Yeah, um, yeah. it's 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 what's going to help us grow as authors. And that's what we also do to come on this show. Um, it's a good reason why we do this. But uh, next week, we'll be back with a brand new show. We are looking for season 13 I guest ideas. Uh, please tag us on Twitter or any social media, sorry, X, uh, any social media platforms um, with your suggestions. <laughs> and we will try to get um, on the people that you want to hear us talk to. Um, but Otherwise, have a great weekend. Uh, enjoy your weekend and hopefully get some good writing. If you're doing Nemo Rimo, one thing I want to do from my experience uh, is to tell you don't get too stressed about it. Um, it is hard work. You can get overwhelmed. It's not worth it in that sense, but yes. it's a good persuasive motion. I'm sure Will probably, his reaction, he probably touched on that. But that's my experience. It got me stressed out and at times horrible. Don't let it do that to you. Um, enjoy your writing life. Yeah. Um, but from us, yeah, on a, on a negative note, <laughs> what, what a lovely way to end! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh dear me, I'm terrible at the end. I, I, um, I will end it in the way I that I started it. mid show. Um, yeah, um, take Carver's advice and get into as many women as you can. Um, <laughs> crime fiction <laughs> needs more women. Um, so, um yeah. We have been the Writing Community Chat Show with Will Carver, How to Get Into Women. Um, yes. We'll see you <laughs> next week. See <laughs> Bye -bye. ya. Yeah.